based on a compilation of articles by Rabbi Mikhail ben Pesach Portnar. The Ascending of Man A summary of the test lesson, 211 page, 501, Ot 24. It is important to have the right kavana intention when you read this lesson. Also, let me bring you in remembrance, we have learned about three positions between male and female. Yet, he is telling us about the fourth, the perfect position between male and female. Please refer to the text, to the written material for the Hebrew text. And we continue. At the top, there is the fourth step or condition, and that is when a man and woman are face to face, one opposite the other, because then she receives the light from the face of the male, and this is a miraculous light. And what's more, it isn't necessarily she makes thicker her back, just as in the third position, but she receives him just as it is thin via her face. He brings a fragment of the fourth step, or in other words, the fourth position between male and female. The fourth step is when man and woman are face to face. Behold, the first two steps, positions, back to back and back to face, are attracted by the Ochoraim of Ima, and the third step position is attracted by the high Zivug of Abe and Sag. They let descend the last hay from the eyes, as it is said above. Behold, the first two steps, positions between male and female, back to back and back to face in Hebrew. It is ach bepeh, and ach is back, and pei comes from panim. Face are attracted by the achraim of ima. Do you still remember? Achraim of ima in various levels, of course. The correction of these two positions becomes possible because of the Achoraim of Ima. The Achoraim of Ima shines between the male and female, for instance, at Zon, in that are the first two steps, positions. And the third step, position, is attracted by the high Zivuk, two parts of Im, of Ab and Sag. That that descends the last hay, and then descends the last hay from the name of Ayah, from the eyes. And it is said above, the Partsuf Sag of Adam Kadmon, Aka, they don't know the limitation of the second Simtsum. And when they make Zivug, the light of, the, the light of Zivug comes to the Masach, that is, standing under the Chokhmah, and pushes back the Malchut to her own place of the Malchut of the Rosh. Ab and Sag don't know the second Simtsum, which began or begun from the hairs of the Sag. Slowly, listen and receive. This is no fighting in the spiritual. You don't need power. The thing is, make yourself small and let it happen. That is the real spiritual. The real spiritual is very thin. You can compare it with drops of delicious oil that takes away all the inner chaos. The real spiritual gives you peace, inner peace, and fills you till you sod. The drops come from the head and enter the body. It is very thin. You can't see it. You can only feel it. When you feel it, it is a softness, sweetness, a deep love, peace, and yet it is dynamic. And this correction, third position, is needed only for the male to build up his panim, as it was first, but the female, she's still attached at her achoraim, or, in other words, she can't let go of her achoraim, and she chooses more chasidim, and stops chokhmah, as it is said above. See, in this case, the bina can let go her achoraim, and turn her to the chokhmah. Therefore, the bina needs the ascending of man from the lower steps which are the Zon, her children, Ze'a and Nukva, because then she is obligated to let go the strength of her Achoraim and to turn her face to Chokmah. Can you see how it is working?
The source is still Bina of the four phases of direct light. Do you remember? There was her Chochmah from the Achoraim. The place of Ibur, the belly. And from the belly came out Ze'a, Zayrampin, and Nukva, which is Malchut. And the Ze'a and Nukva are coming from the belly of the Achoraim, of Bina. That is their original place. And because of that, all the time they return to Bina. And each time when they return to Bina, the Bina turns her face to Chokma to make Zivug. So she, Bina, can give to her children, Za'ai Nukva, just as a mother in this world. Now look closely how this mechanism works. She does do this only for the sake of Zon. Because she can't attract for them the shining of Chochmah without this. Isn't this great? Here you see how it works from the time of the second Tzimtzum. A higher can't give at a lower as long as there is no request from the lower. The higher needs a sincere and honest request from the lower. Clear. We aren't talking about a request for the sixth fridge for something we already have. No, you need a real shortcoming and then ask. If you do so, Hashem will give you an answer. Absolutely. If man let ascends man, it goes to the nukva, and she connects herself with... The same with us. When we let ascend in a sincere way the man, and not in a pseudo way, and say, Father, Give us our daily bread. And so one, one doesn't understand the real meaning of these words Yeshua spoke. Father, give us our daily bread, means, I give you my man from below. Give me the strength to let ascend the man. Let my request be sincere that I will receive my daily bread, a daily portion of the heavenly mana, as a consequence of my request. Exactly the same with us. Man needs to work in an individual way. Why do I use the phrase, man needs to work at himself in an individual way? If you know you have to work by way of your kav, is there another way? Only by way of the kav, the work is vertical. Then you work vertical with Hashem. Kav is vertical and not round as the round light. Only by way of the personal contact, direct contact, it works. And the contact goes via the kav. Of course, Hashem is everywhere and Hashem helps anybody. He loves all of creation, but when man works on himself in an individual way, he receives from him in an individual way too, and not in the way as your cat receives, meaning only the receiving of the round light. If you let us send your man, it first goes to the nukva of the world asya, and gradually to the nukva of the world atzalut. She turns her face to Zea. Zerampin, just as we now are learning considering Abba and Ima. Here in this lesson we learn about the male and the female. She turns herself to him and he draws to her the Abba and Ima. He embeds Abba and she embeds Ima. And here they have Zivug. Not on their own place, but upstairs, where it is safe to make Zivug. Safe means upstairs where the klipot can't take for themselves. Then it goes further from the Abba and Ima to Ein Sof. And from Ein Sof, the blessing goes to Abba and Ima. Gradually, it comes down to Zon. The Zon receives, receives it in the place where her position is merely the zone that was below on her own place. From there it goes to the ascended 
souls, souls which ascend to the zone of the earlier condition, and there the souls receive and bring it down to their own place. The zivug only takes place when we connect ourselves with zon, zeranpia and nukva, and there is no other way. If there isn't the connection with zon, we aren't allowed to make zivug. The same when we are still here below in our wish to receive for ourselves. What will happen? There will be a signal, so the light won't come down to us. Let ascend your man, make thinner your aviut, so you can receive from the above and bring it further to below. Now the man is ascended from below to the female, therefore she turns her face to the face of Chokmah, the fourth step. This only can happen when there has been man from below. In a way, we can say every man that has the strength of Ibur. When you let ascend your man with the strength of Ibur, the same will happen as with Zon. They too receive Ibur and they ascend to Abba and Ima always, no matter if your man is weak or strong. When it is a request with Ibur, it makes the, so, the Zon ascend to the Abba and Ima. The Zon ascends to Abba Ima, but only to the outer part of them. Do you still remember? There are three parts of Abba and Ima. The same with Zayar Ampin. There is the outer part, which is the place of Ibur, and from there is the embedding of the outer part of the Abba and Ima. He embeds Abba and she embeds Ima. From that point, she receives Mad, the filling of Abba and Ima, because the Abba and Ima made Zivug in the most outer part of them. And when there is, and when there is the strength to cause Yenika, we receive Hagat, because in Ibur there is only the receiving of Nehia. Then, Man ascends higher to the middle part, and from that point is the ascending of Yenika. It is us who cause Yenika. Then Zon ascends further to the middle part of Abba and Ima. There was Reshemot in the Abba and Ima in their Yenika and Ibur. Now the Zon embeds the middle part of Abba and Ima. At this point, the Abba and Ima make Zivug with the Masach, which is standing in their middle part. When there is the strength for Gadlut, the Zon can rise further to the Gar of Abba and Ima, to the Chabad of Abba and Ima, and there they make the Zivug in their most inner part. Now the Zon can receive the Mochim, and the Zon gives this to the justify one's meaning, he who let ascend man to Zon. This is a short introduction of how it works within the limitation of my words. And no, the subject of the ascending of man, let returns the Chochmah and Bina face to face, is rooted in the ten sefirot of the Or Yashar, the direct light. Again, he brings in our memory the situation of the four phases, the ten sfirot of Or Yashah, because being of the direct light is inside the aspect of Hasidim and not in Chochmah, therefore they too are seen as the back for Chochmah, but the moment when she wishes to radiate Za'ah, and the essence of Za'ah is the shining of Chochmah, as it is said above, behold, now she is forced to turn her face to Chochmah, face to face to receive from him the shining of Chochmah for the sake of Ze'ah, of the direct light. Here we see the beginning, the roots of this phenomenon. This is Kabbalah. The moment you understand this mechanism, you understand everything. Don't think this is given to the gods or at man who are very intelligent, powerful and strong. In a way, it is genius and simplicity. The moment you know how it functions within yourself, you can always count on it. Within you, it will work automatically. It isn't yours, and that's, no, and, and that's so nice. It isn't yours, and 
that's so nice. Suppose it should be yours, you can lose it, forget it, but when you know how it functions and you let it happen, there will be a constructive rescue healing within you. There is nothing else what can rescue or heal man more than this method of Hashem. It was Hashem himself who constructed it this way. Once there was unrest within myself, I couldn't find healing. I have learned a lot. Talmud, etc. But I still, still I felt myself as a lost sheep. But now here in Kabbalah, and of course because of the connection with Yeshua, I have found it. But he who learns Kabbalah without Yeshua is as, how can I say it, he's learning because of the learning and doesn't make it practical. Kabbalah can hide the most important thing for man. She can hide her strength to bring man the dynamic rescue. One can't learn Kabbalah without Yeshua. It's impossible. Yeshua is the root of Kabbalah. Clear? A tree needs roots. First the root has to grow, and gradually the trunk, branches, and a crown eventually fruit. The same with Kabbalah. As long as one hasn't accepted Yeshua, the tree of life can't grow. When there is no root, it, is it possible, when there's no root, is it possible to speak about a tree when there is no root? When there's nothing the tree comes from, See how important a root is, but at the same time, only a root is nothing. There has to be branches and blossom to give fruit. A root needs maintenance. It needs water, sunshine. One has to weed it, etc. And when one keeps himself only busy with this, it has no meaning either. A tree has to give fruit. You have to plant seeds, etc. and maintain it so something can grow, blossom, and give fruit. The same with Brit Hadasha, or the New Testament. When Kabbalah and Torah aren't involved, it has no meaning. Yeshua is the root of Kabbalah, and not only simply a root. He who is learning the New Testament without Torah, without Kabbalah, stays in poverty, just as in my example where I was limited in my words. That is only a root. But the root hasn't become a tree, therefore there aren't fruits either, and one can't pick them. Behold, as long as she doesn't bring out, let shine or create the Ze'ah, she's still in the condition of Achoraim with Chochmah. She doesn't want to receive Chochmah, and after her radiation of the Ze'ah, she's in the condition of face-to-face -face with Chochmah, to shine the shining of Chochmah, and pass the shining on to Ze'ah. See, you see the source of the root of the condition Chokmah and Bina face to face is Ze'ah, the direct light. In a way we are speaking here of the root, of the root, the source of the root of the condition face to face between Chokmah and Bina, and that, that's Ze'ah. Because of the need the man that comes to Zea and she brings it to Abba and Ima and they make Zivug. Then the father and mother will help us. And with this you will understand the words of the Rav better. This is only a reference where you can find the words of the Rav. He is telling us the light he said is given at Bina, and this is the light of Zea, Zayrampin, as man, and stays in her as man forever, read there, and stays in here as man forever, read there. What he means is this, or Hasidim, light of Ze'ah stays in her, in Bina. What is he saying? Here he's talking about the second part suf of Adam Kadmon. What happened there? The light Keter didn't show up. The light Keter went out from the Kilim. What came in the second part of Ab? In the Keter came the highest light, or Chokmah. In the Kli, Keter, the light Chokmah came because the light Keter disappeared. In the Kli Chokmah, the light Bina came one light less. And in the Kli of Bina, the light of Zeah came in. In a way, you can say this is already Man. 
It isn't here light. It is light of Bina. Hasidim, but another light Hasidim. A thinner light Hasidim of Da'a. Here in the second part, Suf was given at, at her the light of Ze'ah. And this way, it stays Man forever. Now she's obligated to help Za all time. And Za always has a reference in the mother, Reshimon, in his light. He always can count on it. Isn't this marvelous? Within her is the light of Za also as Reshimon. Therefore, she always can, in a legitimate way, turn herself to Chokhmah when Za needs it. Meaning, as it is said above, because the moment Bina wishes to attract Gadlut of the light has said to bring out, radiate on his place, Zea, then she is obligated to turn her face to Chokhmah, and therefore the light has said is regarding herself as the aspect of Man. The light of Zea is always considered as Man. That means he who causes her Zivug face to face with Chokhmah. And behold, it is explained deeply the essence of the ascending of Man. That means the cause, he who arouses the Zivug between Chokhmah and Bina. That without this cause, Chokhmah and Bina wouldn't make Zivug face to face because of the backside of Bina who repels Chokhmah in the essence of what is written because she wishes Hasidim. This is Bina herself when she hasn't turned herself to her children. And the cause in Zon, and the cause is Zon, because they are the sons of Bina, and their essence is only the shining of Chokmah. They need the shining of the light Chokmah. Because the whole difference between Bina of the direct light and the Zon of the direct light is only in the shining of Chokmah. Which shining of the Chokmah she attracts for Zea, that both are the light of Hasidim. But the light Bina is light Hasidim absolutely without the shining of Chokhmah, while Zea has the shining of Chokhmah, and therefore can't be formed the Ziwuk of the Gadlut for Abba and Ima without the ascending of Man, as long Zon don't let ascend Man to Bina. She stays connected with her deep desire to her Hasidim, which is the essence of her building up from the side of the Or Yashar, as it, is expl- as it is explained. This has been a wonderful test lesson. It is so great what he's telling us. I have the absolute attention because what we are learning here is the base of our correction of everything. Because the whole difference between Bina of the direct light and the zone of the direct light is only in the shining of Chokmah. Pay attention both have Hasidim. The difference is in the shining of Chokhmah. Which shining of the Chokhmah she attracts for Za'a? She doesn't need it. Clear? That's the difference between them. That both are the light of Hasidim. Both Za'a and Bina are Hasidim. But the light Bina, pay attention, is light Hasidim absolutely without the shining of Chokmah, while Zea has the shining of Chokmah. This is so marvelous. A tremendous definition of the difference between the Hasidim of Bina and the Hasidim of Zea. Within him shines Chokmah, and therefore can't be formed the Zivug of the Gadlut for Abba and Ima without the ascending of Man as long the Zon don't let ascend Man to the Bina. She stays connected with her deep desire to her Hasidim, because she only desires Hasidim, which is the essence of her building up from the side of Or Yashar, as it, as it is explained. In this lesson of Tess, we see the essence of Man. Read carefully what he is saying to us, and you will see why I stress the learning of this is so important. Because this is the essence. And remember these words for all places where they speak in one way or another about the ascending of man.